Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. On the screen here, you can see some of my recent results. And I show this to you because I want you to know that the topic here that I'm going to be talking about is nothing that is based in theory. Nothing like a textbook, there is no theory here. This is an issue that is a problem. And in fact, it, it's a problem to the point where if you can see right there, I lost $1,000, it bit me. So it's not necessarily this is only for brand new people to the stock market or new investors or new traders. It's really for anybody because even when you're aware of the problem, which I am, it's still sneaky enough where it can creep in and bite you. And I wanna make you well aware of how even if you do have a good strategy, you can still have problems within your trading. And then I also wanna offer up a solution to, well, how can you help fix this? How can you, nothing's perfect, but how can you leverage everything in your favor as much as possible where the problem isn't as big as a problem as it could potentially could be. And once again, no theory here. You can see that, sure, I took that loss, but I was still able to you know close up over the five-day period up over $2,100. So no theory here, no textbook stuff. In fact, the examples I'm gonna use are from, you know, again, very real world situations. So it's not like I'm needle or you know, picking a needle out of a haystack for the exact perfect example. I'm gonna use all real stuff going forward. So with that being said, the first bit of you know reality here is that as part of the community that I offer at claytrader.com, I send out a weekly scan of my personal scans via an email newsletter, and this is something that's coming from there. And I just bring all that up because this truly did happen in the real world. This is not me just cherry picking some example, it truly did play out. So what we have here is just you know a, a chart for the stock CHK, and it was all a question of, hey, you know what? This price has gone down to that $1.26 mark before, it's bounced, you know what? Maybe there'll be some sort of bounce again if it gets down there. So let's see how this actually all played out. So right there that you can see that the price did indeed go down to that green line and hit $1.26. And at the time of this uh, you know, point within the quote unquote story of the price, it was up at $1.56, which is 23.8%. Now I don't know about you, but I'm speaking for myself, and I've you know been around you know coaching and helping traders since 2013. So I, I know that I'm not the only person that's had this feeling, but maybe you can relate. But you're up that you know you're up that amount, and you're thinking, well, it, it's gone up that amount. So should I sell? I mean, of course not. You're feeling great about yourself. You're feeling like a million bucks. You got a great entry point. Look at this thing. The price is skyrocketing in your favor. Sell? Why would I sell? The, I, I got a great entry point. This thing is shooting straight up in my favor. And once again, this is not theory. This was an alert that I sent out. So this, you know, very well could have happened to somebody. And it happens, you know, pretty, pretty frequently. And this emotion, you know, is known as greed, right? Everybody's heard of greed. And everybody says, well, you gotta watch out for greed. Greed will greed will really hurt you. You know, you, you might have a good strategy, but don't be greedy. And all those are true, but when you stop and think about it, those are all just little sound bites, right? Okay, that yeah, I, I guess I greed is I, I know greed is can be a problem, but how I mean how I guess how exactly gonna be a problem? Well, this is how it starts because it slips its way in. I mean, being up twenty three point eight percent and just, you know. And like I said, it's not illogical to think, well, I, the price is going higher, the price is going higher. I'm not selling. Okay, well, that's like I said, that's greed kind of putting its foot in the door. So let's see how this story continues to play out. Then just a few days later, all of a sudden the price is now down at $1.34, which is only a 6.3% move from that entry point. So at this point, that would be kind of the emotional feelings, right? Just, oh, what was I doing? I was up 23.8%. And now I'm only up 6.3%. Uh, all right, well, uh, you know, you're, you're just not feeling good about yourself. Now, it's not a loss or anything like that, but yeah, you're, you're probably feeling a little bit frustrated. So let's keep on going with this story. Then all of a sudden, a few days later, well, hey, guess what? The price is back up at $1.56, and you're right back at that 23.8% move. So at this point, you're thinking, yep, I, I knew it. I, I, it was going to go back up. Yeah, yes and you're feeling pretty good about yourself, your confidence level is maybe getting a little higher than it should be, but you're feeling good. You, you didn't sell even though it came down, you held and now the price has bounced back up that quick. So let's continue on with the story. Now all of a sudden the price has dropped down and it's sitting at 
a dollar twenty-eight, which from a percentage standpoint, well, now you're only up at one point six percent. So at this point, you're probably really getting towards the what am I? Oh, oh, you, you're you're probably blown into a, a paper bag, right? You're, you're. It's not a loss, but wow. I mean, to go from twenty-three point eight percent, and now it's one point six percent. You're probably freaking out, but. What happened last time? And this is this is how the market works. This is how stocks can, or really anything, not just necessarily stocks, Forex, futures, options. What happened last time? So sure, you may be in panic mode, but what's the but? Well, last time it pulled back. Remember what happened? The price went, it went, it went back up. So yeah, you're you're feeling a little panicked here, but last time it happened, the price went back up. So let's see, is that gonna happen? And again, this is not me cherry picking anything. This was right from uh, the newsletter. So think about it. In, in this situation, members of the community could have had a, a good solid gain of up over 20%. But now, you know, if they let that greed emotion step in, if they let those you know, doubts and the overconfidence creep into their process, you know, get into their strategy, because think about it, this was a good strategy, right? The strategy, Got you in at a dollar twenty-six, and then it, you know, it bounced. The price went up very nicely from that point. So it's not a strategy problem at this point in time. Strategy puts you in a situation where you're up over twenty percent. But this is how good strategies get corrupted, get ruined. All of a sudden, those emotions, the big one of greed, comes in, and now you're sitting in this situation. But let's see how this continues to play out. And no joke, that is what happened the next couple of days, now sitting at 91% or 91 cents, which was a decline from that entry point of 27.8%. Now down at the lows, had you were sold at the very bottom, that would have been a loss of 35.7%. But this is probably the worst from the high where you know, remember when you would have been up 23.8%? From that high, that was a drop of 41.7%. In, let's see, one, two, basically three days. Three days from you could have been out up over 20% and then it dropped 41.7%, which I think that's probably not even accurate enough to the emotions that would be going on at that point in time. Just are you, are you, are you kidding? What just happened? What? Good. So think about it. This just happens to you as a trader. So let's keep on moving and let's look at another example. Again, this is coming from the scan, so this is not me cherry picking anything. This is as real as it gets. So again, we're looking at a setup here where it's just a trend trading. I put in some trend lines there. Um, you know, the, the, the stock is you know methodically been moving upwards. So we're just looking at this from an up you know trending perspective. So let's see how this story played out. So right there, you can see that the price actually did pull back to that trend line, which was right there around 78 cents, or 77, 78, 76, right around there. Let's just call it 77. So that would have been an, an entry point. So from a strategy perspective, hey, we just got us in, all right, 77 cents. And then the very next day, the price was up there at 92 cents. And that was a, that was a gain of 19.5%. Now for example's sake, I'm just gonna assume that you like do the perfect trade, so you sold the top. Now in all reality, that's very hard to do, but like I said, just for simplicity's sake and to you know, just get across the numbers and you know, the, cause remember the numbers, aren't really the, the key thing. The key thing here is the, the psychology and emotions of it all. But for this situation, you sold it right there at 92 cents, which was a gain of 19.5%, which in all actuality, I mean, that, that, that's a nice gain. I mean, but how do you think you're feeling? Well, think about it. You just came off CHK, which was a roller coaster. It was rough. So you know what? You're just relieved. You're just happy that, whoo, whoo, after CHK, after that previous one, I'm just glad that I was able to, to turn a profit, I'm, I'm who I feel good about that. I, I just, oh, all right, good, who Now, what started all this? Well, remember, greed started all this. So now, how is greed affecting you? It's actually affecting you in the sense of, well, now you're trying so hard to avoid greed that you sold right now, which may or may not be too soon, but I'm gonna say that again. Now, how is greed actually affecting the strategy? Greed is affecting the strategy because you're just simply trying to avoid greed in the first place. So let's see how this goes out. So that is the same chart, and as a reminder, the price, or so you sold right there, and the next day the price went down to 80 cents. So you're probably feeling pretty good, like, I knew it, I knew it, price was going down, 
Price was going down, I knew it. So you're probably thinking and feeling pretty good about yourself, but this is once again the exact same chart. And as a little reminder here, that is where you sold at 92 cents, right? That is where you sold because greed was affecting you in the sense of you were just trying to simply avoid the greed. Don't let greed get to me, don't let greed get to me. Oh, I'm in the green, a profit is a profit. Hey, any profit is a good profit. You know, you can't go broke taking a profit. All those silly sayings that are actually greed affecting people's trade strategies because all those, all those statements are doing is just helping you avoid greed. And yes, you want to avoid greed, but you want to be smart about it because if you avoid greed too much, this is what happens because after you would have sold at 92 cents, within the next couple of weeks, the thing went up to $1.41, which was good for 83.1%. So you sold at 19% and you could have had 83%. Oh, that is why green is, oh, any profit is a good profit. No, that, that's just not true. Because if you take that to an extreme, which many people do, and again, they, they do because they experience a bad trade. And then all of a sudden, everything goes to the extreme on the other way, and then they get, too tight. I mean, have you ever been there before? Have you ever sold too soon and then the price just skyrockets in your favor like this? Once more, and I know I keep reiterating this, but I want you to know, this is not theory. This was not cherry picked. <laughs> this is an example that truly did happen. And if you're selling too soon, I would definitely wager to, to guess that you probably had a, a, a bad trade previously. And now all of a sudden, greed is just playing all sorts of games because, well, I don't want to be greedy and then you sell too soon and you miss out on a huge, huge opportunity like this. It's very, very real and it's very, very annoying and frustrating. So what is the actual solution to this? How can you get around or make, you know, make the most of this problem? Like I said, emotions are always gonna be there, but the way you can approach it, in my opinion, at least in the, in the most logical way, in a way that's going to keep your emotions at bay, is to realize, well, what's the definition of partial? And a partial, for, what, for our you know, situation here, just not total. When I was new, and what I see all the time is people think, and you know, be honest with yourself as you listen if you're newer, is that beginners to the stock market, you know, beginners to, to day trading or swing trading, they hear the word sell and they think, okay, that means I have to sell everything. That means I have to sell in total. I mean, do you think like that? So for example, if you have 10 shares of something and somebody says you're gonna sell, does your mind automatically go to, well, I'm gonna sell all 10? For me, it always did. I always equated for some reason that the word sell in the world of the stock market or in any market means, well, you have to sell everything. You have to sell your total position. But in the world of trading, in lingo, there's a something called a partial sell. And again, what does partial mean? Well, not total. Meaning, no, you don't have to sell your total order. You can only do a portion of it, you can do a partial sell. So for example, if our little Lego friend there buys 100 shares of something and they approach a situation where they're just thinking, you know what, I'm not quite sure what to do. Have you ever been there? Are you in a situation where you're thinking, I don't know, do I buy more? Do I just hold? Or I don't, am I supposed to sell right now? Should I sell? I mean, have you ever had any confusion? Have you ever had any uncertainty of what you should probably do in your trading? I mean, it happens to me all the time. I mean, I approach situations and yeah, the, the question comes, I don't know, do I hold here or should I buy some more? Like I said, I, I, hopefully that's just not me, but I'm pretty sure that other people have had that situation. Do I hold or do I buy more? So point being though, that if you buy 100 shares and you come across one of these situations where you're just not quite sure, well, that's where you do the partial sell. So again, you're not gonna do your total because again, partial means not total. So not total means, well, just sell 50 shares. So what does that actually do for you? Well, let's take a look at both of these examples that we went through, but now let's apply the partial sell. So in trading terminology, this would be part of you know the trade management standpoint of things. So once again, we have this example, the CHK, and let's say our uh, you know you bought 100 shares, but this time you know when it got up over that 20%, you're like you know what, this looks good, but I, I want to be disciplined. But I mean this thing could keep on going, so but you know what, I'm just gonna sell 50. So you sell 50 up there. And how's that gonna make you feel? That's gonna give you a sigh of relief, right? Because now you know, again, trading terminology, trading lingo, you've locked in some profits. You've taken profits off the table. But what's the, what's the great thing here is, well, you still have 50 shares. 
Now in this situation, still having 50 shares, in hindsight, well yeah, you had to sell those for a loss of some amount. But you know what? Because you did sell some of them for a gain, it's just kind of a meh, eh, you know, it happens. It, what, what, you know, are, you, are you going Lamborghini shopping? No. Are you going you know, shopping for a bridge that you need to live under? No. I mean, it, just, it, it is what it is. So yes, in hindsight, oh, I should have sold all 100 shares up there, but that's why we're all trillionaires in our hindsight accounts. But here, at least when you sold at 50, you, 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 you relieve some of the stress. If you're unknown, well yeah, I, it, I, it is unknown, it is uncertain, but you know what, at least I sold some. And in this situation, yeah, it didn't work out, but you're still walking away either at a small gain, a break even, or maybe just a slight loss. And you know, losses happen, that's not a big deal as long as the losses stay controlled. And this is a great way to just control losses, make sure that nothing spins out of control. On the flip side though, let's go through this example. So once again, you have 100 shares, and let's say at this situation, you, know, you sell 50, because you know what, you're thinking, you know what, ah, I'm in the green, that's great, I'm happy with 19% in just a day, but I, I mean, this thing could keep on moving though, right? What, oh man, do I, do I hold or do I sell? Because what happens if this thing keeps moving? Oh, what should I do? Well, remember, partial. You don't have to sell all 100 right there, so just sell 50. And then as you know what happened, right there, oh, okay. Because, all right, you know what? It could roll right back over, but you know if it rolls right back over, at least I sold 50 shares in the green. But you know what? What happens if it does go in my favor? Well, that's great, I'm still gonna have 50 shares, and that's exactly what happened. When it goes up to there, you sell 50 shares, and you know what? Job well done, good job. Now, of course, in hindsight, you're gonna be thinking, oh, why did I sell 50 all the way down there? I should have just held all the way and then sold all 100 up there. Once again, welcome to the wonderful world of hindsight. It's always easier in hindsight, but in the heat of the moment, you're gonna feel relieved to just take that partial sale and in some situations, hey, you know what, it went up, but you still got to take part in the, in, the, in the bigger move. Not as big as it could have been, but remember, CHK, the price could have also just totally rolled right back over on you too. So don't let hindsight get into your mind because it's just, it's a nasty situation. But ultimately, that's what greed leads to. It leads to hesitation, it leads to just way too much of avoiding greed. Because think about it, in this situation, there is a little bit of greed. Right, there's greed in the sense of, well, I don't wanna sell everything because what happens if it keeps going in my favor? That is a little bit of greed. Now, a little bit of greed, that's, that's okay. But when you go to just avoiding greed in its entirety, well, then you can miss out on situations like this. So when Gordon Gecko said greed is good, he should have said a little bit of greed is good because that's gonna keep you in a, you know, situations that can ultimately pay off you know, way more than if you're just being way too stingy and you know, you're running away from greed at all costs and all of a sudden you're taking yourself out of trades that could have given you much more. So greed, and that is how greed all of a sudden just spreads its tentacles around what is a good strategy, but good strategies can be totally corrupted and ruined and made to seem like bad strategies, but at the end of the day, it's actually not the strategy that's the problem. It's the emotions and it's the you know, person trying to execute the strategy. So hopefully this can help, hopefully you can learn from it. If you did enjoy it, then I'd encourage you to please subscribe to the channel. There's lots of other videos out there. Also click the like button on this video. You know, if, if these videos keep getting uh, decent amounts of likes, then I'm gonna keep doing these. You know, I'm having a good time, you know, taking more of this approach, uh, but I, I just need to see, you know, continued support because if these don't get likes and these don't get comments, um, then, I'm not offended, it is what it is, but at least I know that, well, there's probably no point in me continuing to spend my time doing these. But if there is comments and there is lots of likes, then yeah, I have no problem doing these. So if you did find it helpful, then yeah, by all means, please subscribe to the channel and also leave a comment and uh, you know leave a comment down below. So beware of that, beware of greed, and beware of that sneaky way that greed can all of a sudden create problems by just simply avoiding greed in the first place. But be aware of what's out there and don't automatically think that a strategy is bad because you've had some headaches. Maybe the, maybe the headaches are coming from the person in the mirror. Like I showed you at the very beginning, you're not alone, it happens to me, it just recently happened to me, but when you have a solution and when you have the proper trade management in place, as you saw, you can still recover from it. So get out there and be very aware of your inner self and you know your inner psychology as a trader. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, 
whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm gonna to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too good, way too, good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.